This is a change to the video that I was going to do. After watching the news the other day and being moved to tears, I was compelled to write about the bushfires in Australia. The news item that I saw was about a koala bear being rescued by an amazing woman who quite literally took the shirt off her back to wrap around the koala and take him to safety. His pitiful cries and his paws desperately clawing at the bottle of water offered to him will stay with me for a long time. According to the World Wildlife Fund, koalas could become extinct. Why this is the case I will discuss later, but the bushfires are certainly not helping. High temperatures and low rainfall make bushfires a natural hazard in Australia and natural tree oils in native eucalypt forests can fuel fires. The continent has a diverse geography and meteorological climate, so bushfires tend to occur in different areas at different times. In southeast Australia, bushfires tend to be the most common and most severe during the summer and autumn, which in Australia is between December and March. It is a fire-prone area, and warm and dry conditions intensify the probability of fire. In northern and southwest Australia, bushfires usually occur during the dry season, which is April to September. The fire severity in the north tends to be associated with seasonal weather patterns. Many fires in this area are caused by humans, either unintentionally or arson. Fire investigators in Australia have nine categories for the ignition sources of fires. Not putting out cigarette butts probably is a cause, but it rarely occurs as very specific conditions are needed. Burning off is another cause. This is where fires are deliberately lit to clear out excessive dry vegetation. However, these can get out of control and spread. Arson is another cause, with around half of all bushfires either being known to be deliberately lit or are considered suspicious. Brake failure in trains is also another cause. It can throw out a wall of sparks and burning carbon embers thrown from train engine exhausts can also start bushfires. Embers from campfires and campfires that haven't properly been extinguished are also bushfire hazards. The use of equipment such as chainsaws, angle grinders and mowers can also start fires. Surprisingly, children are also categorised as causing fires as they are often implicated in starting fires, but usually they're considered to be out of curiosity rather than malice. Lightning strikes are the most common ignition source in remote areas. And the final category is miscellaneous, which includes things such as power lines, firearms, blasting and electric fences. What is different about this year's bushfire season is its geographical scale and intensity. It is happening all up and down the country and there is a very early start to the fire season across eastern Australia, which usually peaks in January and February. So far, fires have burned 1.65 million hectares in the state of New South Wales, which is more than the state's total in the previous three years combined. Why the fires have been so bad this year and started so early can be put down to the drought that has been occurring in northeast of Australia over the last year or so. Low moisture in the vegetation makes conditions ripe for bushfires, and due to the high temperatures, eucalyptus trees are shedding their leaves to try to decrease their water loss. This is adding to the fuel layer on the ground. At this time of year, bushfires mostly start as a result of dry lightning. This lightning is associated with thunderstorms that occur in dry conditions where the rain evaporates before it has a chance to hit the ground. Any lightning strikes that hit the ground cause a spark and with all of the dry fuel around have a greater chance of starting a fire. Also, the mix of warm air with cold air creates gusty and windy conditions that change the fire behaviour and it is much harder to control. The Commissioner for New South Wales Rural Fire Service has said they will not have all these fires contained and locked up for many, many weeks and what they need is rain. Unfortunately, there is nothing in the forecast for the foreseeable future that's going to make any discernible difference to the conditions that are being experienced. Australia's flora have evolved a variety of strategies to survive bushfires. They usually involve the protection of tissue from heat such as thick bark and other vegetative insulation. They are protected from the heat and the damage. Some plants are able to re-sprout above the ground after the fires and others have well insulated underground roots and stems. Some seeds are dependent on fire to stimulate seed release and dispersal. However, even Australia's fire-adapted forest ecosystems are struggling because they are facing increasingly frequent events. This increasing tempo, spatial scale and frequency of fires could see ecosystems disappear. Some animals are also able to survive bushfires by avoiding them. For example, birds can fly away, but chicks and eggs can't. Insects, reptiles and small mammals may be able to burrow under the soil, which is a good insulator and offers some protection from the fires. 
Fast moving animals such as kangaroos can avoid the fires, but harm still can befall them, such as the 40 kangaroos found dead in August, attempting to flee wild bushfires on Bribey Island in Australia. Their bodies were seen by pilots flying over the beach. The exact cause of death is unknown. One of the animals most at risk is the iconic koala bear. They are particularly vulnerable to bushfires as they are slow moving and live in eucalyptus trees that burn quickly and intensely. 250 miles north of Sydney, in a place called Port Macquarie, is a koala hospital. It is the only facility of its kind in the world. When the fires first ignited around Port Macquarie weeks ago, officials at the hospital warned that hundreds of koalas may be killed. The koalas live in a colony of 600 at Lake Innes Nature Reserve near Port Macquarie. As many as 350 koalas have been killed and that number will rise as koalas dehydrate or starve to death. Rescuers have not yet been able to confirm the scope of the loss because some of the blazes are still raging. Another problem is that 75% of the fireground footprint is prime koala habitat. The koalas don't have much of their home left. Rescued koalas arrive at the hospital with burnt paws and noses, singed fur and dehydration. The first thing done to help the koala is to rehydrate it. And then the following day their burns are treated with burn cream and then bandaged. The dressings are changed every three days. The koala that I saw on BBC News was taken here and named Lewis. There are video clips of the woman who rescued him, Tony Doherty, going to visit him. What an amazing person, as are all the other rescuers and carers. Lewis is doing very well, but is so badly burnt he may not be able to be released into the wild and is likely to join the centre's breeding programme. This breeding programme has just been set up. A koala ark is to be established to allow the surviving koalas to be accommodated in a healthy habitat area. Hopefully, these koalas will breed and a new population of koalas will be established for return to the wild. The hospital initially asked for public donations to raise money to buy and distribute automatic drinking stations, which will be installed in the burnt areas to help koalas and other wildlife survive. The number of drinking stations being built has now been increased and they will be shared with other wildlife organisations in fire-affected regions across New South Wales. The hospital has also purchased a water-carrying vehicle with firefighting capabilities to replenish the drinking stations with water as needed. Koalas can survive for weeks after a fire, suffering from burns and smoke inhalation. Many are still out there in inaccessible areas or active firegrounds with their homes and food sources destroyed. Search and rescue teams are trying to locate survivors, but it is a difficult job. To help find the koalas, the International Fund for Animal Welfare has a rescue dog called Bear, who can sniff out any injured koalas. As if this is not all sad enough, koalas are considered vulnerable to extinction. 95% of the nation's koala population has gone. In the last week, the plight of the koala bears made headlines in the news with claims that they had become functionally extinct. This means that the population is so small that the population will not be able to sustain itself and no longer plays a significant role in the ecosystem function. Experts have actually disputed this. Although their numbers are continuing to decrease, dropping to fewer than 20,000 in their primary habitat in New South Wales, the population in this area has fallen by half in the last 20 years. This is because of deforestation. Eastern Australia is a deforestation hotspot. It is amongst the world's worst 11 offenders, but the only developed country on the list. Each year, 500,000 hectares of trees are bulldozed. These trees are the koala's homes. If the koalas survive their tree being cut down, they are left vulnerable to threats such as cars, dogs or starvation as they search for a new home. Most deforestation in Australia is to produce pasture for livestock. Bans on the excessive tree clearing in New South Wales and Queensland in the 1990s and early 2000s halted this, but recent changes to legislation in both states have again made it easier for farmers and landowners to clear trees. The World Wildlife Fund are asking for much stronger laws to stop excessive tree clearing, particularly in Queensland and New South Wales. Australia is already well developed and has more than enough cleared land to work with already. It does not need more deforestation. And of course, another cause of deforestation is climate change, which can lead to increased frequency and intensity of bushfires and droughts. And the bushfires add to the climate change problem, as they quite literally add tonnes of CO2 to the atmosphere and an amazing carbon sink is destroyed. 
I find it incomprehensible that such a developed country as Australia takes part in deforestation on a scale that will see the extinction of such iconic animals as the koala and threatened species such as the southern cassowary and Bennett's tree kangaroo. I take heart that there are so many good people in Australia helping the koalas and other wildlife that are being devastated by the bushfires and campaigning to save the habitat of these unique animals. Let's hope they prevail and soon.